to today, give thanks. Tis the season. Uh, and this is our message series, give thanks in Colossians. We're going to be Colossians 1. We're going to read 11 through 14. All right, today. 11 through 14, Colossians 1. Um, every year, though, here at Depot, when it turns to November, we focus on thanks in some way, shape, or form. Uh, through our message series. And we focus on giving back to our community like we are through uh, the thanks uh, giving in a box. So again, I, I remind you to do that and bring in your uh, canned goods and whatnot. But here's the, here's the rub. Here's the challenge. Uh, it is the month of thanks and can we truly be a people that give them? That's the rub. That's the challenge. That's the difficult part. We like to talk about it, right? We like to say we do. But can we truly be a people that give thanks? We like to celebrate it. We fill up our stomachs full of food to celebrate the time of giving thanks. So much so that we have to put on jogging pants for the rest of the day, or maybe the pants are wearing split. It's never happened to me. So I wear jogging pants. Is that Dusty Jr.? Um, so the challenge is giving thanks, actually truly practicing being thankful. And, and being thankful is not just a characteristic of um, a good human being, right? It is. Being thankful is a good a characteristic of a good human being. But, but it's also being thankful is a characteristic, or, or I don't even say characteristic, but it makes for a good Christian, a believer and follower of Jesus Christ, to be a person of thanks. Especially when it comes to being thankful for God, or to God, being thankful to God for His Son Jesus. So we took the Lord's trick or treating last, uh, that was last Sunday, right? Last Sunday was Halloween. We took the boys trick or treating. We went trick or treating with a bunch of other parents and kids. And all the kids, you know, together, they would run up to the front door and they would knock, and the, or the parent was already, the person was already out there. And the, all the parents and moms and dads were standing on the sidewalk watching them go to each door. And, and they would knock say trick or treat and the person would take some candy and give it to them free candy to them and then they would turn around and they would take off running back to the sidewalk to meet with the parents and, and go to the next house but the parents would stop them bring these away and it would be like all the moms and even some of the dads did you tell them thank you? did you say thanks? Go back and tell them thanks. Thank you. Tell them, hey, thank you. Yeah, it was like a whole ordeal. Every house. Thank you. Make sure you tell them. Thank you. You say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So when something is given, thanks is given in return. It's a characteristic that makes a good human being, but also a good Christian when something is given. So as Christians, we believe that all, A-L-L, -L, capital letters, all has been given to us. By God. All including Jesus. He spared not his son. That's in Romans 8.32. Since he did not spare even his own son. But gave him up for us all. Won't he also give us everything else? We could create a pretty extensive list today. Each one of us. Of A-L-L. Count on all the things that we are. God has given us. That we should be thankful for. There's really nothing that God hasn't given us. Therefore, we have a lot, a lot to give thanks for in return. So we're going to be reading from Colossians today. But also throughout this message series, we're going to be in Colossians. Now, in the past, we have done series where we go chapter by chapter up in a book. That's not going to be the case here. We just happen to be in this book of Colossians during this message series. But we're going to be pulling out some scripture from Colossians as it pertains to giving thanks. 
Uh, so, real quick, let's get to know the book of Colossians. Uh, it's another letter written by Paul, the Apostle Paul, to the church of Colossae. And, and he's writing from prison. The interesting thing about this letter is that Paul did not set up the church that he's writing to. And he's not even, he doesn't even know the people that he is writing to in this case. Paul is writing to them to encourage them to avoid some things that are going on in the church. And we see that a lot in Paul's letters. He's, he's telling them to avoid some things, some issues that are going on around them in the church and to stay focused on Jesus. That's the intention of his letter. So Colossians 1, 1 through 14 is what we're going to be reading this morning. It's the greetings and then it's also talks, discusses thanksgiving and prayer. So here we go. This letter is from Paul, chosen, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus and from our brother Timothy. We are writing to God's holy people in the city of Colossae, who are faithful brothers and sisters in Christ. May God our Father give you grace and peace. Verse 3. We always pray for you, and we give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and your love for all God's people, which come from your confident hope of what God has reserved for you in heaven. You have had this expectation ever since your fir you first heard the truth of the good news. The same good news, the gospel, that came to you is going all over the world. is bearing fruit everywhere by changing lives, just as it changed your lives from the day you first heard and understand the truth about God's wonderful grace. You learned about the good news from Epaphras. Uh, this is uh, the one who set up the church. This is uh, um, the one who knows the people there, our beloved co-worker. He is Christ's faithful servant, and he is helping us on your behalf. He has told us about the love for others that the Holy Spirit has given you. So we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. Then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord, and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while, you grow as you learn to know God better and better. We also pray that you will be strengthened with all His glorious power, so you will have all the endurance and patience you need. May you be filled with joy, always thanking the Father. It's an important phrase for us this morning. Always thanking the Father. He has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. Let's all bow in prayer together. Father God, for your word, we pray that it pierces our hearts, it does as it is intended to do, and that's convict us, challenge us, change us, correct us, and encourage us. God, may your word speak deeply to us, May we learn and may we grow today. But God, also going into a world that deeply needs to hear about your son Jesus. May we take it to the world. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, two things today from Scripture. Uh, if it was a four-word message series, right? Some of you are like, oh, I hope it is. If it was a four-word message today. This is what it would be. Always thank the Father. Right? Always thank the Father. That would be the message. It's not a four-word message, so hold your horses, okay? Within the first 14 verses, Paul mentions twice thanks. All right? First, he talks about how he gives thanks to God for the church there. And their faith and their love and what they're doing. So Paul displays thankfulness. All right, He shows it. He displays thankfulness. He practices it. Then in verse 12, he teaches it. He practices what he, practices what he preaches. Right? So he displays it and then he preaches it in verse 12. You can... Um, See in verse 12 that two ways in which um, thankfulness can happen. Number one, 
always, the word always, as in all the time, right? As in never stopping, without ceasing, just like we're supposed to be praying, right? Thankfulness is to happen all the time. And then the second way, somebody answer the phone. Uh, the second way, always, as in whenever there's something to be thankful for, give him thanks. All right, two ways. All the time giving thanks, and then always, as in when there's a reason to give him thanks. Both, of course, are correct. So we're going to start with the latter point. Point number one. Whenever there's something to be thankful for, thank the Father first. That doesn't sound thankful. It sounds like Pastor is annoyed. His mic's messed up. Phones ringing. What's funny is Jake, who set up this phone, uh, see how I passed the blame here. Not the pastor's fault. He asked me when I was coming in the doors, he said, did you turn the ringers off? See, I told you all these swirls, they're breaking down on me. And I said, I think I got it where it's scheduled during this time not to ring. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Point number one. Let's, let's try it, folks. Please be with me. Let's try and be, and be thankful today. Let's, let's focus. Number one, whenever there's something to be thankful for, thank the Father first. Too often we leave God out of the thank yous. We leave God out of the thank yous. As I was writing this, it was raining. I was sitting at my dining room table uh, and looked into our backyard. And my parent, which is my parents' front yard, is our backyard. And I see my dad walking the dog in the rain. Right? Thank you, God. Thank you, God, because he, he should be not with us with what he's gone through in the last year. And I look out and I see Dad walking the dog in the rain. And so there's an opportunity there for me to say thank you, God, to, to give God thanks. That's something significant to be thankful for, seeing him walking the dog in the rain. When, when, the rain, when, when you're prompted, is what I'm saying, when you're prompted, because we are often prompted throughout our day to give God thanks. But a lot of times we pass over the prompt, right? We move past it. A lot of times we, we pass over prompts that are given to us to speak to people. Yes, I've been in Walmart, and yes, God has told me to speak to someone. No. You're not asking me. When we're prompted, we must give thanks to the Father first. Thank you, God. What if things happen the other direction? What if he wasn't walking the dog in the rain that day? What if God didn't miraculously heal him and he wasn't here with us? And I was sitting there writing this. Pray, I hope that here comes the train. That in that moment, that I also thank God if the circumstances were different, if the circumstances were, were the opposite, that I would still give God the thanks for His life. So listen, when opportunities arise and you are prompted, give God thanks. Do it. Don't let them pass by, please. <coughs> and too often, it's unfortunate that we do let them pass over us. We let them, we let them pass by. Uh, thankfulness requires that there be something to be thankful for and someone to be thankful for it. For some that don't believe that there is a God. Uh, the atheists. There was a story of a, a preacher and an atheist, and they were walking together in the park, right? And uh, I'm sure they were having a grand discussion as a preacher and atheist would. And they were walking, by the way, <laughs> did you know this? I've told some people this. The leading atheist in America, y'all want to know his name is? Dusty Smith. Serious. Google it. Google it. 
the leading atheist in America, his name is Dusty Smith. I like to think I'm taking a bite out of his, uh, you know, his work. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I Google my name one time. Is that, is that weird? Yeah, and I found out it was the leading atheist. Anyway, there was a preacher and an atheist that were walking in the park, and the church was a great discussion. And the preacher would, was looking at different things that were going on, maybe the clouds or, or, or um, kids playing in the park or uh, birds or whatever. He was saying how he was thankful for those things, thankful for that thing, thankful for this thing. And the atheist um, decided to chime in and said, I'm thankful. I'm so thankful. He actually tried to outdo the preacher. I am so full of things. I am thankful. For. And he said, and the preacher looked up and said, thankful to who? He did not believe. There must be a, a, someone to give thanks to. And that is our God. So for someone that doesn't believe there is a God, it is difficult to look at creation, to look at all the things that we credit God and give thanks. Thankfulness requires a what and requires a who. And we as Christians have that. We have a what? Jesus. Salvation. And we have a who. God gave us that. And so we return thanks for those things. So whenever there's something to be thankful for, thank the Father first. Number two. Thank the Father all the time because He's all the time giving. Thank the Father all the time because He's all the time giving. Don't believe me. Don't believe me on the number two here. Don't believe me. Just shh. Everybody be quiet for a moment. We just gave you another breath. You just... Breathe another breath. He just gave us another second. He just gave us another moment. And this time, still don't believe me. We are indoors with lights and heat and running water. Still don't believe me. We had snacks and coffee when you came in. Still don't believe me. We just sang worship songs to, to a God. We, we sang them loud and we sang them freely and unashamedly without fear of punishment. Thank you, God. Yeah. Our kids are learning about Jesus. Amen. And our babies are being taken care of. Still don't believe? After this, you're probably going to go have lunch somewhere. You're going to go to a warm home. You're going to be entertained by overpaid athletes. You're going to nap. <laughs> You're going to nap. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And I can keep on going and roll into tomorrow when you wake up and you get to go to work and use your gifts and talents as God has given you uh, to better this world and tell people about Jesus. We can roll over to tomorrow and, and keep on going. And how that money that you earn by using your gifts and talents that God's created for you provides for you and your family. We can keep on going and roll over to them. Thank you, God, for being the giver that you are and that you continue to give and give and give. You never run, God, you never run out. You never run out. Listen, I think the reason that we're so stressed out in this world that we live in, myself included, I think we're so stressed out in this world that we live in because we are thankless. Not this kind of thankless. Thank. We don't give thanks. We don't give thanks. And I'm preaching to this guy too. Right? Most of the time when I stand up here, guys, and this message comes out, it's from God. And so therefore, I'm preaching that to myself too. We, we, we don't give thanks. I actually read 
where giving thanks or having a thankfulness journal is a way to cope with stress and anxiety. You hear that? Giving thanks is a way to cope with stress. We as American Christians are spoiled. And we look at God's gifts and what he has given us as a right. Like, that's what I deserve because I'm an American and I'm a Christian. So I deserve lights and heat and water. And I deserve to get up on Monday morning and complain about Monday morning. And, <laughs> and go to work and complain about work that provides me with me. For my family. We, we look at God's gifts as a right and not a privilege. We believe that all that we get from God is deserved. So when we get what we deserve, no thanks is necessary. When I go to the store and I buy gas, which I did in a very shady area last night, pretty scary. When I go, and it's pretty, I was talking about prices, not the. <laughs> when I go to the store and I buy gas, I don't have to. I'm not. I don't have to thank the cashier uh, for the gas because I paid for it, right? I am paying for the gas. It wasn't given to me freely. It wasn't given to me. I'm, I'm getting what I deserve. I'm getting what I paid for. God gets our thanks because we didn't pay for it. He did with the life of His Son, Jesus. And that's why we give Him our thanks. And that's why we give it to Him continuously. And that's why we give it to Him when prompted. It's because He gives and gives and gives and gives our, His only Son, Jesus. So he deserves our thanks. What didn't we pay for? Salvation in heaven. Gift, free, yours. Believe me. Thank you, God. Earth and all its resources. Thank you, God. Gifts and talents. Given to you. Thank you, God. Family and friends and relationships. Created and given to you. Thank you, God. The church, worldwide, in general, this church in specific. Thank you, God. We didn't pay for any of those things. We, we don't deserve them. They were given to us freely as a gift from our God. In the middle of Colossians 1 here, you're going to see this point. That, that sticks out in Scripture. I guess it's attributed to Paul because it's there in, in Paul's letter, but maybe it's something that he heard. Maybe it's something that was sung. The title in, in my Bible is Christ is Supreme. And, and as, as we read together this point, it's verses 15 through 20 in Colossians 1. We're going to read this poem together. As we read through this, we are reminded of what we are most thankful for from our God. What we believe and what we are thankful for. So let's read. It's not on your screens. I'm sorry. I'll read it. And you can find it in your Bible, through your tablet, or your phone. Colossians 1.15. Here we go. Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see. Such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. There is unseen things that are happening all around us that we don't see that God created and God is ruler over. That's a message series for another time. Everything was created through him and for him. He existed before anything else and holds all creation 
together. Thank you, God. Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning, supreme over all who rise from the dead, so he is first in everything. For God, in all his fullness, was pleased to live in Christ. And through him, God reconciled everything to himself. Thank you, God, for reconciliation. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. Thank you, God, for your son, Jesus. Babe, you can, you guys can come up and I'm going to close. So, so, a few weeks from now, when it's the day, right? The big day, the big turkey day, the, the, the Thanksgiving. And I don't know if you do this or not. You, you know, you go around the table or maybe you stand together as a family and pray before dinner. Um, We've done this in the past as a family, or a big family. I don't know if you do it, but maybe you share something you're thankful for. Does, does do anybody do that at, at Thanksgiving? Good. Good. One person. <laughs> Challenges. Throw the challenge down. So maybe you do this. Maybe you sit around the table and everybody goes around and says one thing that they're thankful for on Thanksgiving. And everybody's supposed to share something. And there's been times that I've witnessed, experienced in this kind of situation where people are wondering and giving thanks for things, where someone will get somebody, or, or, could you come back to me, make a circle back around, pass on me, and come back, and by the time you get back, I'll have something that I'm thankful for. Or, it's like, they say the same thing that somebody else just said. Oh, yeah, 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 family. I'm, that's, that's okay. I'm, I'm thankful for my family. Ditto. Good one there, Karen. Uh, I'm thankful for my family, too. Listen, if that happens in your Thanksgiving celebration, right, and you're sitting around the table or circled up and you're doing it, listen, don't be... That person. Speak up. Because there is a whole lot to be thankful for. A whole lot. Don't be the person that is, hmm, I don't know. Did a so and so took mine. There's always something to be thankful for because God is always giving. Now I'm prayer with you. <clears throat> Father God, my prayer is that we are not just thankful people during a season or a holiday. That God, we are thankful all the time, because you are all the time giving. And whenever prompted, we are thankful. So yes, God, you have given us this time, this season, this month, this holiday to be reminded of giving thanks. But God, It's not just for a season, it's all the time. So Lord, I pray that each and every person that is here this morning that's heard your word will be challenged to practice the beginning now. And God, if there's someone here that has not received that free gift of salvation in heaven. Jesus in their place upon the cross. Jesus getting what we deserved. But I pray that this morning they would receive this gift and that their hearts would be filled with thanks for their salvation. 
So God, as we stand and sing in just a moment, I pray that you will to work, move in us, through us. May life change happen here this morning. We pray this in the great name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen.